Okay, so here is a short video that I've made on uh, the carriage of reefer containers. And basically, I'll talk about the different kinds of reefer containers and what kind of refrigeration systems uh, are used on ships uh, for their carriage. Uh, this is especially for those who are people or those seafarers or mariners who have never seen a reefer container or they don't sail on container ships, but they may be going for orals examination and they may be asked questions about a reefer container. So this is uh, what a reefer container looks like. This is a 40 feet reefer container and uh, you can see the the refrigeration unit is normally towards the aft of the container but let's start talking about uh, what are the different kinds of uh, cooling systems available for reefer containers on board ships so reefer containers may be made of aluminium or glass reinforced plastic or grp uh, which is the same material that the live boat is made of and this has a inner wall of steel and plastic or steel or plastic uh, the floor will normally have aluminium uh, longitudinals for air circulation to take place and the space between the walls is filled with uh, polyurethane foam for insulation for the correct insulation to maintain uh, temperatures uh, the cold air is normally blown at the top and extracted from the bottom and uh, the container itself may be uh, integrated or isothermic type which includes the corn air systems and i'll talk about all this uh, as well as we proceed along in this video so the integrated reefer container is uh, it uses a compressor and a ventilator and a freon system now freon systems are used or were being popularly used but because of its impact on the environment uh, a lot of companies actually refrain from using the freon systems now because the freon system using the freon system uh, releases uh, chlorofluorocarbons or cfcs which has an impact on the environment so a lot of the companies are now refraining from using the freon systems uh, but uh, integrated reefer container used to use the electrical power or rather they use the electrical power from the ship's mains but sometimes they carry th their own generator as well they are provided with their own thermographs and are provided to record and regulate the temperature during voyage. The seafarers actually monitor the temperatures from a digital reading as well as the thermograph reading which is available there. And the machinery is accessible for repairs if there is any issue and for which the ship's electrician carries out the repairs if any issues with the uh, reefer container during the voyage. Then we have the isothermic reefer containers. These isothermic containers actually have ventilating holes at the bottom and top which are fitted with self-closing rubber flaps the cold air is provided by either of the three methods that is the clip-on units the portable tank with liquid nox nitrogen or the corn air systems and i'll talk about all these three as we proceed along today so i'll talk about each of these cooling systems now the clip-on units uh, they consist of a compressor ventilator and freon system with or without a diesel generator hooked on to the front end of the container and its outlet disconnected to the bottom ventilating holes then we have the portable tank with liquid nitrogen at minus 193 degrees Celsius. Uh, here the release of gas is controlled by a thermostatic valve. The valve opens for a short while if the container temperature rises and some nitrogen is released into the coding pipes running inside the container causing cooling due to gas expansion. The valve for uh, the portable tank must be finely tuned uh, for the release to take place. Finally, we have the corner system. The corner system, uh, in the corner system, the ship actually has a large inbuilt refrigeration plant with ducts to the cargo holds. The ducts are connected to the ventilation holes of the container and cold air is supplied from the ship's main refrigeration plant. The temperatures are maintained by regulating the flow of the air of the container. However, the corner system has a few advantages. The advantage is being there's less loss of container space because the container itself doesn't have to carry any machinery in it. Uh, the, there's a possibility of use for non-refer cargo as well on return journey. Then uh, it has a lower purchase and leasing costs. There's a less risk of damage, uh, easy to maintain, cheaper to maintain and consumes lesser energy. However, uh, the corner system is still not widely used because the system is only used where a two-way trade exists in refrigerated cargo. So they want to make full use of the system if it exists. So uh, ships which carry only reefer containers all the time, uh, that is where the systems exist. And the cost of providing the refrigeration plant ashore makes it usable only for a few ports. And uh, refrigeration machinery failure affects all the containers, unfortunately because otherwise if you have individual cooling systems for the containers something goes wrong then only that container is affected but here if the refrigeration plant machinery if it fails because it's a ship's refrigeration plant machinery then all the containers will get affected 
then the maintenance and fitting of clip-on units as a replacement starts to prove expensive if something goes wrong. So that's why Conair systems are still not widely used. So here was a short lecture on reefer containers and the cooling systems. I hope you find this useful. This is especially for those mariners who are going for orals but have no idea about carriage of reefer containers. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.